In ASP.NET MVC, the C, or the controller, sometimes ends up containing all of our business logic, but we don't really want to. Mediator gives us a way to break that dependency. Let's match on that. Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Uh, in today's episode, we're gonna talk about this fabulous little library and pattern called Mediator. Uh, so this is a Jimmy Bogart special. Uh, this is, man, this has been around for gonna be at least a decade now. I've been using it for years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I generally use it in kind of a, the ASP.NET MPC space, but you can use it in Razor Pages. You can use it in any sort of .NET application. Uh, and what it does is it allows you to break up your logic into you know, a bunch of separate pieces. So let, let's take a look at something here. Uh, so I have here a, a brand new ASP.NET application, and this one just happens to be using Razor Pages. You can put controllers in here if you want to, but we're just going to focus on the Razor Page approach right now. Uh, so in this, I have this class here, which is a Razor page. And inside of that, I have this on post async here. Uh, and let's imagine that I have a bunch of logic in here so that when somebody submits this form, uh, maybe we do a bunch of different things. So we're gonna write a record to the database. We're gonna write a history file to the database. We're going to send uh, an email to somebody. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. So you can imagine that this would be a pretty long function. And we can easily break it up by putting a bunch of classes in here or even just extracting methods and having a bunch of methods inside of this model. Uh, but some of the stuff is still really tightly coupled in that scenario. Uh, so we don't necessarily want the, the logic here to know that an email is being sent or any of the semantics around how emails get sent. We just want that to kind of happen. So it's sort of like uh, an inversion of control approach here. Uh, and Mediator provides us access to this. So Mediator has two different things that drive it. So the first one is a command. So in this method here, we would write some sort of command. So we would do something. Uh, and then when that something is done, we might want to raise events to say, hey, that thing got done. Uh, and in a large application, when you raise that event, it could be that there are like three or four different things that listen in on that and perform some action based on that. Uh, you might have encountered this in a kind of distributed application where you have some sort of microservice that does something and then it raises a bunch of events so that other microservices can pick up on that they're interested in it uh, and that could just be like updating a cache or it could be doing something so it could be that like when i submit an order to amazon uh, they raise an order submitted event and that is listened to by a bunch of different services so it's a, the the shipping service is interested in it because they want to start getting the box ready to put the stuff in the the warehouse is interested in it because they want to dispatch somebody to go and pick the items off the shelf the billing department is interested in it because they want to send me a, a bill or a charge for it uh, but we don't want the initial service to have to know that it's going to call out to all these other services. We want to invert that so that these other services can subscribe into that. Uh, and that's what Mediator does, but it does it in a, in a smaller setting. So I don't know if I've explained that very well, but let, let's go through and implement something here so that we can see what it looks like. Uh, so I have installed Mediator inside of this application, and I have also installed uh, a package called mediator.extensions or Microsoft Dependency Injection. Uh, you know, a nice short name. Uh, and this allows us to tie into the dependency injection framework uh, in here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here into services and I'm just going to do add mediator. Uh, and this takes, let's type the class. Sorry, go ahead. I believe that's mediate R. Yeah, we were talking about this, that uh, Mediator is really uh, missing out on some of the pirate analogies that we could mm -hmm. have with it. Uh, but we'll 
we'll do another episode on that sometime later where we fork mediator and turn it into a proper pirate mediator. Right. So this is going to add a couple of things to our dependency injection. Uh, the first thing it's going to add is an I mediator, and that's really the entry point that we use inside all of our controllers or classes here. And uh, we can just grab that here using dependency injection. So I'll take an I mediator in here, mediator, and we'll just declare a few. Um, okay, good. Uh, and then down here we want to do some sort of event here. So we can do mediator. Uh, and there's send and publisher. So we probably want to do send because we want to send out a command. We want something to happen as a result of this. Uh, and we don't have a command yet. So let's go and build a command here. Uh, and I always end up creating like a, a handlers folder. And within that, I have a, a folder for kind of each action that I want to have happen here. So let's call this one um, add address. All right, in here we need a couple of classes. And I'm just renaming. So the first thing that we need is a message that gets sent from our class. And that's going to contain all the properties uh, that we need to process on the mediator. And this makes it very simple to do testing around this too. So I can do um, add, add this command, and we'll have this implement I um, request this thing. And then here we give it what we'd like the reply type to be. Yeah, so this could be add address. Let's we'll create a class down here called that. Okay, so this is what's going to come back from Mediator. So this could contain something as simple as, yes, I've saved it, or it could be maybe the ID of the address that was committed, or, or anything like that. Uh, so here we're going to add, um, I guess, the user ID, and then whatever other stuff there is in addresses is postal code. Um, So now that we've got this, we want to create a handler for this. So that's going to look like this. Uh, it's going to be, I call it something like add address handler, and it implements I request, request handler. Uh, and we feed that in kind of the, the input and the output type. So add address command, add address. Uh, this down here, uh, and this participates fully in the dependency injection. So if we needed to put in a repository or a DB context or something in here that uh, we wanted to do inside of the handler, we could. Uh, one of the interesting things is we can also inject an I mediator in here. Go to that. And then down here, we're going to save to the database. And then we're going to raise an event to say that we have added this address here. So we do like mediator dot publish this time. So the difference between send and publish is that send, we know the destination that we're going to. So you can only send to one place. There can only be one thing in your application that takes add address command. But for publish, there could be a lot of places that take the publish message. And each one of those uh, can listen in optionally on this message and do something with it. So let's create a new message here. We'll do class address added. Use some of the mediator nomenclature here. So in a kind of CQRS 
style system. This is a, a command. I've called a command here, although it's really a request in mediator. Uh, and then this I would call like an event, but in mediator it's called a, a notification. Uh, so we're going to raise this event here. This has to implement I notification. And you'll notice that I notification doesn't take any types in. And that's because uh, we don't expect any response from a notification. Because this system down here doesn't know who it's publishing to, there's no way for it to know who to, to get messages back from. So we keep that separate. Uh, so we're going to publish a new address. And then in here, we'd give whatever properties that we wanted to, to do. This, all these methods are asynchronous now. Uh, and then it's complaining because we need to return uh, and address response. All right. Yeah, these being async can be a bit tricky sometimes if you don't actually, if you're not actually doing any async work. Um, the solution there, I guess, is if if you're not doing any async, you just return task dot from result and pass yeah. in the, the thing. Yeah, I do that. I'm, no, I'm never sure if that's the right thing to do, but you can do that. So if you if I wasn't doing an await here, it's talking about is that we'll get a warning here to say, hey, you're not doing anything in here, but you could do like task dot from result. Yeah, so there's task dot from result or uh, yeah, you wouldn't await it. You would just not make the method async. In that case, sorry, I'm distracting the, from the so the handle method. You would remove async from it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And no. then the other option is to return a value task, which is a oh yeah another I thing that you can do. Seen talk about those lately. I didn't really understand that. We should do we should learn mm -hmm. that and do an episode on it. But in this case, we're going to publish this out here. Uh, so we can just run this through and see how it works. Uh, we should we should add a couple of notification handlers in here too, just mm -hmm. like us. one very creative. Yeah. So I handle notifications, and this is an add. Or address added. Uh, I really like the the ability to publish and and define the notification handlers in in Mediator because it's a it's a good example of the open close principle, where your your system's open to to modify or you're able to add new handlers without having to change your existing uh, your existing implementation of the the request handler. Yeah, that's fantastic to have that. Uh, so this is, oh, there's no code pass here. It's because I don't return a task here, but um, we can just do. Um, Completed the task. Is, yeah, it's a task of something, right? Yeah. Points on that too, so we can just see how that works. Uh, and in theory, that should be it. So let's just go run the application and see how that works. Oh no, Mr. Semicolon. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't finish this method either, so I should probably do that. Uh, new add address. Um, Two, so notifications get raised now in the background. Okay, so I added a do it button, which does it. Okay, so uh, this is going to go and create our message. It's going to send it. It's a really tight. Huh? Let's close a few things here. All right, so we can send that off. Uh, and that is going to go and hit our handler here, which is going to go and publish these messages. 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw a big point here so we can observe one other thing. Uh, so that's going to go up here. It's going to hit notification handle one. So now it's going to send an email. Uh, it's going to hit notification handle number two now. So maybe now it's uh, adding a log message to the database for this. Uh, and now it's going to go back to the add address response. So a thing to, to recognize for this is that these things happen in line, like the notifications that get raised, get processed in line and not kind of deferred for later processing or process on a separate thread or anything like that. Like it's just calling out to those uh, other methods. Uh, and now it's going to return that and we're returned back to this page here. Uh, so this is a really good way of breaking up complicated logic uh, into a bunch of different steps. Uh, so I have some code right now that I was just working on this morning where we upload a file. Uh, and when we upload the file, we kind of process it. So we go through and we work on each line inside of that file. And depending on what's in that line, we might raise an event to, to do something else. So we have some like logging that we want to do in specific cases, uh, some history records that we want to write. So we, we raise those events. Uh, and that means that it's really easy for us to kind of decouple the processing of the file and whatever those event handlers are that happen in the background. Without ending up with a 30,000 line file full of it, or method yeah. full of if statements, right? Yeah, that's the idea that we want to make it short, readable code, short methods, easy to test, those sorts of things. Very cool. All right, great. Well, Thank you everybody for joining us today. Be sure to like, subscribe. What is the third thing you're supposed to do? Up phone, comment, is maybe? comment, comment is the, the thing that we want everybody to do. Yeah. Um, and you can do all of that synchronously. You don't have to wait on anything for that. <laughs> all, right. all right. We'll see you next episode. Bye. Bye. Good stuff.